you can have the most outlandish takes about Indian cinema and no one's going to judge you over here. This is a safe space, okay? Hopefully. Let's take a few examples. Uh, you think that 12th Fail was just an extension of what TVF has already done and you weren't really mesmerized about the film? We can agree to disagree. Uh, you think Aditya Roy Kapoor gets most of his roles just because he's a pretty face and lacks the versatility of most of his contemporaries? We'll probably agree with each other. Uh, you think a channel dedicated to Indian cinema should focus on Marathi cinema and languages from other states beyond just Hindi cinema and the southern states? I think I'll agree with you. More importantly, you think like Rithik Roshan's an average dancer? I'm sorry, say uh, Rithik Roshan, an average dancer. Karan Johar should stop apologizing. If there is a director that has had an imprint on the Hindi film going audience since the 90s, it has to be Karan Johar. He is a creator who gets a lot of flack for just the saturation of his appearances, some of his takes, well, sometimes justifiably so, and less backlash due to his films and more because of his talk show. Totally wanted to completely murder Anushka Sharma's career. The one thing that I'm extremely tired of hearing is Karan Johar being apologetic about Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, his first film that turned out to be a super hit. People love to revisit it. People acknowledge some of its problematic traits, but move on. I hate the apology to her and rant he goes on whenever asked about it in any interview. It is totally wrong. <laughs> but what do I do? Those were my thoughts at that time and I'm, not, and I'm very apologetic about those thoughts because today I don't have those thoughts. Right. I was young, uninformed and possibly cinematically influenced to a certain stage that it was kind of, we were ticking boxes. This is also due to the hyper-awareness he has with reading everything that is written about him on social media. People reminisce about the film and acknowledge that it was a different time. It also shaped your career. So stop constantly feeling bad about what it preached, just so that you can pander to the social media discourse about it. Political and creative alienation leads to dwindling audience connection. This is something that I feel with actors like Kangana Ranaut and Vidyu Jamwal. With Kangana specifically, I must say that a major contributor to the lack of connection with the audience in the last four years, the results of which are clear, with there being little takers for her films these days, is due to her interviews that are largely political and hateful about the film industry that she works in. This is not to discredit Kangana's own experience, but the journey has transformed from being a rational human who spoke against the restrictive ways of the industry to burning every creative bridge within it too. This has also led to the likes of Kangana and Vidyut wanting to create their own hermit kingdoms where they are the heroes and this leads to many opportunities of collaborations going out of the window. Vidyut thrived as the antagonist in movies like Force and Tupki. The aspiration to lead the pack is always admirable, but one needs to be collaborative to sustain oneself in such a demanding industry. Shah Rukh Khan and his peculiar dialogue delivery. This is something that I noticed in SRK's dialogue delivery in Jawan and Dunkey. There is this baritone and husky pitch that SRK attempted in Jawan as the bald vigilante, which I understood as the character was trying to mask his real voice and personality. But even in the speech in the climax, you see SRK really tense up with his neck and dialogue delivery. Even when I saw Dunkey, I saw a similar pitch and delivery with SRK almost clenching his jaw in emotional and dramatic scenes with the same husky tone. I hope this is not something new that SRK has incorporated regarding his dramatic moments in films because the natural flow of his delivery is way more effective than when he tenses up like in these two films. Sanjay Leela Bansali is not glorifying anything. One of the talking topics regarding Sanjay Leela Bansali ever since the trailer of Hira Mandi released has been about his obsession with courtesans and their lifestyle. Almost as if he is romanticizing their lifestyle with these picturesque frames. But my point regarding the same is that Sanjay Leela Bansali and his film's aesthetic have nothing to do with the glorification of his characters, but has everything to do with his upbringing and what his wish was for the films to be like. An escape from what was his dark reality. My mind was preoccupied with finding beauty in that lack of beauty in my life or lack of space. Therefore, my sets are very humongous because of the lack of space. Right. We were all crammed into almost breathing in onto each other. This is what I felt about the infamous Johar scene in Padmavat as well. 
where everyone ignored the marks of a true leader regarding Rani Padmavati as she not only killed a conspirator with her political intellect but also led an army to rescue her husband all the focus was on how pretty the Johar scene looked like not understanding that the Rajput women would much rather end their lives than be subject to being slaves to an invader Sanjeelila Bansali never glorified this act or the lifestyle of courtesans with Gangubai be assured when you step in for his films that the frames will just be immaculate i've also realized people will find what they want to find gali boy mein keh rahe the ki poverty porn hai yahan pe keh rahe hain ki trauma ko aesthetically dikhaya gaya hai log wohi dekhenge jo unhe dekhna hai the ranveer and johnny sins collaboration i got many dms regarding the new bold care ad with ranveer singh and johnny sins and shockingly i was also reprimanded on why i don't put these ad campaigns in my matlab kuch bhi episodes and i realized that so many lost the point of the ad on how the pitch of the campaign was intentionally absurd and how it highlighted a taboo subject with the most accessible medium of indian soaps it's nothing short of brilliant people are criticizing hindi cinema for allowing opportunities to adult film stars like johnny sins and sunny leone but are not realizing that it's such a leap forward by actors like ranveer Sing to not only associate with such brands but also engage in conversations about sexual health that is otherwise left unanswered or something that people are ashamed of i on the contrary to what some people feel thought the ad was effective hilarious and so progressive i would love to know your thoughts as well ye jawani hai diwani would have been trolled today i genuinely feel like there was an abandon with which we saw films just 7 to 8 years ago before the nature of film discourse became so saturated nuanced and well for a lack of a better word complex just seeing the debates that are flung around especially with romantic films these days with people calling to jhooti mein makkar misogynistic rocky or rani preachy I know that there would be several threads about the problematic tropes of ye jawani hai diwani today on how bunny was a walking red flag how nana was a pushover who deserved better than him and how the end was just a forced happy ending knowing very well the free bird that bunny is and how he would want to travel at the drop of a hat again rather than settle the fun that we reminisce about is almost snatched away today because we can't like simple things anymore it's all a debate a you versus me situation where i shame you for having a contrarian opinion and i feel like that simplicity with which we saw films is somewhat gone today the star that diversifies the most of all the chatter that goes around stars and the diversity of their filmography i must say that ajit devgan does not get enough credit of how many types of genres he dabbles into and he has been consistent in doing the same since the late 90s this is a man who has dabbled into the generic commercial space and the indie space throughout his career and he still goes on to do the same if i just take examples of some years you will be blown away imagine the year 2002 where ajay starred in the spectacular company played the antithesis of the same in the legend of bhagat singh in the same year and then played a psycho killer in diwangi he would do a horror film like bhoot and in the same year the national award winning film ganga jal i see him even today experiment with genres other than singham doing films like maidan and shaitan and i love this diversification that he is constantly attempting and something which should be appreciated way more by the audience are romcom characters desirable because they are rich the question is are men in bollywood romcoms only desirable beyond their personality because they are rich had aditya from jab we met not have a multi million dollar company would geet be as receptive of getting rescued is part of rocky randhava being a walking talking green flag also have to do with his abundant wealth are mickey's advances in tu jhooti mein makkar partly tolerable because he is a rich lala did dipika engage in the affair in gehraiya hoping for the possibility to get out of her middle class mediocrity something that is beyond just sexual attraction other than the beautiful love story of manoj and shraddha where her love for the man has nothing to do with his financial state are subconsciously these characters interested in these men because they are rich is that a huge contributing factor would the circumstances be different if they weren't so well off i would just throw this point out to all of you and discuss in the comments with you all
the future of talented female actors. A recent interview of Mrunal Thakur absolutely broke me where she communicated how she is not being considered for Bollywood rom-coms maybe because she is not popular enough. Sorry? I don't know. But- I'm, not, I'm not popular enough to get a love story yet. I'm just really tired of proving my filmmakers now. This is an actor who has proven her mettle in every film she has featured in and it saddens me that the likes of Sanya Malhotra and Vamika Gabbi too are also in the sidelines for being considered for the same. These are actors who have consistently delivered but commercial filmmakers in Hindi cinema cannot look beyond Alia Bhatt, Deepika Padukone and Katrina Kaif. This makes me really hope that Mrunal keeps on working in Telugu cinema. Sanya and Vamika experiment with other languages too. Vamika has already with Malayalam cinema because the kind of love Mrunal has received for Sita Ramam and Hai Nana is something that a Sanya or Vamika would only get in Telugu or Malayalam cinema. Looking beyond the confines of just being a mid-budget heroine in Hindi cinema because I believe their potential deserves way more. A desperate revival of animation is needed. I was reading about the statistics of the most watched movies on streaming platforms and not so shockingly, the seven most streamed films were actually all animated movies. This made me reminisce about the time Indian cinema between the years of 2010 and 2015 were actually producing a lot of animated films and for especially the time that they released, they were pushing boundaries of storytelling and were of international standards. Arjun the Warrior Prince is still one of the most remarkable projects produced by Ronnie Skruvala and Siddharth Roy Kapoor. And I hope one day producers acknowledge the brilliance of animated films, the large section of the population that will tune into the same and how it can revolutionize the otherwise star-dependent feature films. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below if you have some unpopular opinions. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle is right in front of you. Follow me at jammypants4. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.